So let's talk about the errors that you can make when you do hypothesis testing. So remember that we use sample data to determine whether we reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the hypo null hypothesis. That means that we're making conclusions about the population characteristic, whether it's mu, whether it's p, whether it's some other population characteristic being tested based on partial information, sample data, right? So whenever you do that, there is always the danger that you're going to make the incorrect decision, okay? So there is some chance that the test procedure with the sample data will lead to the wrong conclusion, okay? It turns out where well, we can study this and, and kind of protect against this. There's two types of errors that you can make when you're doing hypothesis testing because there's two types of, uh, two decisions that you can um, end up with. A type one error is when you reject the null hypothesis, but the null hy hypothesis was actually true, okay? This is like discovering something that's not really there, okay? So like the researcher discovers something that wasn't really there. The probability of committing a type one error, we assign this symbol to called alpha, and we refer to this symbol as the level of significance or significance level of the test. So the chance that you commit a type 1 error is called alpha, okay? Alpha is set by the researcher at the very beginning of the study, very beginning of the study, not after data is collected, okay? In other words, what we're saying here is that we can control the probability of a type 1 error. So this kind of error can be controlled by the researcher by setting alpha to a particular value. Typical choices for alpha are 10%, 5%, 1%, but anything between 0 and 1 is valid, but not wise. The, 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 the moral here is that as you decrease alpha, as you make alpha lower, you make it more and more difficult to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, you make a type 1 error more and more unlikely. Okay? In other words, Lowering alpha increases the burden of proof required before you reject a null hypothesis. Okay? So hopefully one of those kind of resonated. Now, the other type of error we can make is called the type 2 error. And this is when you fail to reject the null when the null was actually false. So this is like taking no action when you should have. So there was actually something there that the researcher was suspicious of, you could think of, and they the, ended up not finding it, failing to reject the null. So the default, the status quo uh, kind of prevailed, even though there was, uh, it should have been knocked off, it should have been rejected. So the probability of committing a type 2 error, we have a symbol for. We use beta, the Greek letter beta. Beta is not controlled directly by the researcher, but it does have a relationship with alpha. And we'll talk about that on the next slide. Okay, so beta is just a symbol we assign to the probability of making this mistake. Okay? Uh, by the way, this is not a, a human mistake, a human error. This is just ending up with data that leads us to this conclusion when it shouldn't have, okay? That's how you got to think of this. Because remember, we're using sample data to make decisions. There's always a chance that you end up with the sample of data that leads you to the wrong conclusion, okay? Uh, and incidentally, there is a quantity called uh, po the power of a test which is just one minus beta. So one minus the probability of making a type two error is called the power of, the of, a, of a test. So power is, you could think of uh, as the complement of a type two error, okay? So you want a test to have high power, okay? So what is the relationship between alpha and beta, between, um, type 1 error and type 2 error. Well, here's, let me skip to this slide and just, I'll come back to that table. As you lower alpha, it becomes harder and harder to reject the null. We talked about that. All else, of course, being the same. A little typo here. Therefore, 
Therefore, you re increase the risk of failing to reject the null when HO is false. In other words, as alpha decreases, beta increases. Okay? So one looks for a balance between this, these two. And that's why those values like 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.10 are such common choices because in that range of 0 0.01, even 0 0.001, if you want to be very careful and you make alpha even lower than 0 0.01, even at, 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 in between that 0 0.01 to 0.10%, which is the most common I've, I've witnessed for alpha choices for level of significance, you get a nice balance between uh, type 1 error and type 2 error occurring. Okay, so that's why researchers would typically do the, this type of thing. Now, if you have a particular situation where it's very, very dangerous for you to make a particular one of these errors, like a type 1 error, then it, for, you need to adjust your alpha accordingly. For example, in the nuclear power plant example that we talked about before, it's very dangerous for us to make a type 1 error. Let's go back and see what that would mean. If I make a type 1 error in this power plant, what I would be saying, right, type 1 error means I reject the null, but the null was actually true. So I made a type 1 error. What does that mean? I walked away from this saying that the power plant is meeting specification because I rejected the null, right? And I walk away with the alternative. I'm telling the power plant to continue operations, even though unbeknownst to me and anyone else, it actually shouldn't have continued operations because the null hypothesis was true and the power plant didn't meet specs and it's actually a very dangerous situation for a nuclear power plant to not meet specs. So in this case, create, committing a type 1 error is very, very, very dangerous. Therefore, if there's ever a case to make alpha really, really low, here I would go very low and this is just an arbitrary number but maybe you go something as low as this you make it really unlikely to to commit a type 1 error the price you pay is you also lose power on this test because you make it really difficult to reject the null and you might end up committing a type 2 error okay but this is the trade-off that researchers have to work with depending on the type of problem they're working with in this case, with the giving money to a, an organization for a project, this is a lot less um, critical. So if you end up making an error, you lose some money. So uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.01, these are uh, normal choices. Okay. And um, one last thing I want to talk about here in this table, this decision of errors. So this you'll see in, in every stats textbook. This kind of organizes everything that we talked about so far with uh, all the different possibilities. So the possible actions we can take, right, the two decisions we talked about, and then the possible conditions of the null. So this is like the truth. Uh, of course, we don't ever know this. but based on what the truth is and what we decide, we either make an error or we make the correct decision. Uh, just to review this for one second, if the null hypothesis is true, actually, we don't ever know, and we reject it, then we committed a type 1 error, right? And so that's how you can read the, the three other uh, cells in this table, okay? So this is a nice way to organize everything that we've talked about, about the errors, okay? And before I conclude this particular set of slides, um, uh, of which I generally introduced hypothesis testing, there's two important uh, terms that are, uh, we should get out of the way. So a test statistic is something very specific to a hypothesis test. As you may already know, a statistic is any quantity that you compute from sample data. It's any function of sample data. A test statistic is exactly that, except it's a statistic used specifically for a hypothesis test. So depending on the hypothesis test that you're specifically doing, and there are tons of them, you will have a specific test statistic. And you're going to see a theme that there's not, uh, there's going to be a few of these test statistics, 
and uh, you're going to get familiar with them, like the Z-test statistic, the T-test statistic, the chi-square test statistic, the F-test statistic, and so on and so forth. There's, there's, there's more, but those are the big four. Okay. P-value, this is a very, very important concept. It's a probability, and it's specifically a probability associated with hypothesis tests. Okay. It's the probability of getting a test statistic that's as extreme or more extreme than the one that you calculated from the sample data that you had in your study, given that the null hypothesis is true. Okay? I use the word extreme here purposefully because extreme could mean different things in different problems. And by that I mean depending on what the alternative hypothesis is, whether it's greater than, whether it's less than, whether it's not equal to, the term extreme can mean different things, okay? You could also use the word contradictory, more contradictory. So when I say as extreme or more extreme, you can think as contradictory or more contradictory to the null hypothesis or as consistent or more consistent with the alternative hypothesis, okay? Let me say that again. I think I may have misspoke. The probability of getting a test statistic as contradictory or more contradictory than the one that you calculated in the study with your sample data, given that the null is true, that is what a p-value is. Okay, So if you like the extreme or more contradictory, you could play this back a number of times and hold, um, let this sink in. It's, a, it's at first a complicated concept, but slowly starts sinking in. And the rule at the end of the day is that if the p-value is less than or equal the level of significance, your decision is to reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value is greater than alpha, which is the only other thing it could be, then you fail to reject. So this is how you make that final decision in a hypothesis test using a p-value and comparing it to a level of significance alpha. Okay, um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, this was a very conceptual and definition heavy um, lecture. So I thought this was good to record and give context to. Uh, make the kind of um, lecture come alive a little bit as opposed to just memorizing definitions. So, till next time, have a great day and goodbye for now.